a minute. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe, and many wonders and miraculous signs were done by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. Selling their possessions and goods, they gave to everyone as he had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and they ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. You know, when you look at God's Word and you really start to examine God's Word, the first thing that you see in, in verse 42 is that the early church was a devoted church. They were totally devoted to what was going on. There was no people having those self-agendas that they were trying to push their agenda above what the church's agenda was. They were doing their level best to devote themselves to the apostles' teaching. And you know, I think when I look at that word apostle, I get to thinking about today's church. We have a person in the church today that has been put there by God that happens to be the pastor. And we as a church today need to be devoting ourselves to the pastor's teachings to the teachings of the Word of God. And we need to really be putting ourselves out there in the, in the front line with Him to try to reach all the people that are lost. Those that are wandering around in this world of sin need to be coming into the church. And we as, as Christians need to be devoted to the Bible and to the teachings of our pastor so that we can go out and bring them into the church and see that they are led to the Lord Jesus Christ. They were teaching. The apostles were teaching. That was the primary responsibility of the, of the apostles. If you look a little further in the book of Acts, you'll find that the first deacons were appointed to assist in the problems of the church. That's right. There were people that were causing problems because they weren't getting the proper amount of food. And so they appointed seven good men, full of the Holy Spirit, the Bible says, that went and took care of this problem so that the apostles could devote themselves to what? to the praying and to the teaching of the early church. You see, that's what we need to do today in our churches. Amen. We need to be letting our pastor be devoted to the prayer and to the, to the, to the teaching of the, of the Word of God, and the rest of us need to pick up the cross and carry it and go out and reach those people that need to be served. That's the responsibility of the people in the church, especially our deacons in the church today need to be really totally acting as servants. So they were... Fellowship. And you know what? I don't think that there's, there's a Baptist in the whole world that don't like fellowship. And we have some great fellowship in our church. I'll tell you what, there's one thing about it. There's a little lady sitting in the back of the room here tonight. She makes sure that we all have everything that we need when we go to fellowship. You know, a lot of people, a lot of people say that they're really getting fat or they're doing this or they're doing something else. And I just look at my little belly and I say, I'm just a full gospel preacher. You know, I'm just a full gospel preacher. That's what I'm going to be. That's what I hope to be for the rest of my life. But they were breaking bread. They were really enjoying being with one another. And you know, that's what the church needs to do today. We need to enjoy being with one another. We should, should be the kind of people that we can't hardly wait to get into the fellowship of our brothers and sisters in Christ. You know, I, I so much enjoy coming to this radio station. Every time I come here, I just feel the, the Spirit of God come down upon me. And that's why the, that we do our level best to try to support this radio station. And I wish that everybody within the sound of my voice tonight would make a call and, and donate something to this cause. But this church was devoted to the, to the apostles' teaching and to the fellowship and to the breaking of bread. But now this is one thing right here coming up next that you really got to get into. If you're not devoted to prayer then sometimes you better sit down and think about it just a little bit and say, look, am I really doing God's will? Because prayer is the most important thing that we can do. There are people out there that need prayer. There are churches in this community that need prayer. There, there's pastors that need prayer. There's a lot of people in my family that need prayer. We need to pray every day for our church and our pastor and our leadership. Prayer. We need to get down on them knees and pray God, give us strength and wisdom to handle circumstances that we're facing. We need to have prayer. And it says that everyone was filled with awe. <laughs> they, they just couldn't hardly believe what was going on. 
And you know what? When we really learn to pray the way we need to pray, we're going to see things happen in all the churches around us. There's going to be so many good things going on that we won't have time to be worrying about the bad stuff. We'll just be so inspired and so lifted up and we'll be looking forward to the next thing that's going to happen because Jesus is going to make sure that we have all the good things coming down to us. They were filled with awe and many wonders and miraculous signs were being done by the apostles. You know, this church, this early church, they had something that we don't have. They had the apostles. But you know something? We got something even more important than that. We have the Holy Word of God which gives us all the necessary things that we need in order to get out here and do the job that God wants us to do to reach the lost. That's what this radio station does. It goes out over the airways, even over the internet. There's people right now probably listening to us in Australia. They're reaching the lost. They may be in, lost in Australia, maybe, maybe in China, maybe, maybe in Vietnam, may, maybe in Mexico, maybe all over the world. They're on the internet. They're going out and they're doing God's will. And all the believers were together. You know, if I really turned loose here and let go, I'd be preaching for an hour on these little funeral verses of Scripture, but we're just going to try to hit the highlights. But all the believers were together. Together. And they had what? Everything in common. Now you look at that little line in the Scripture there, and you think about that. And all the believers were together. That means together. They were totally knit together. They, 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 they didn't have a bunch of people that was backbiting and stabbing and they didn't have their own agendas and, and they weren't running around in circles trying to second guess the pastor's leadership. They were together. The, the people were supporting the things of God. They were, they were going out and supporting God to everyone and every place that they went. All things in common. Every one of them was a total, solid believer of the Lord Jesus Christ. And they made sure that everybody they ran into, that they gave that information out. They were telling people about Jesus. They were telling people, they were probably quoting John 3.16. For God so loved the world that He gave His only Son. You know, God gave us the greatest gift that we could ever be given, and that is the gift of salvation through Jesus. Amen. And you know what? They, they didn't worry about tithing either. One of the biggest problems you have in the church today, there wouldn't be a financial problem in anybody's church today if everybody was given what they were supposed to give. Mm -hmm. If they were just giving, the book of Ephesians tells us to give as you have prospered. Give as you have prospered. These early Christians, they were selling their, their possessions and their goods, and they gave to anyone as he had need. You know what? If the church today was really doing its job, there wouldn't be any need for welfare. There wouldn't be any need for Social Security. There wouldn't be any need for financial aid. There wouldn't be any need for a bailout. There wouldn't be any need for Obamanomics. There wouldn't be any need for anything. Because let me tell you what, the church would be taking care of the people that had need. Amen. They gave to everyone that had need. And every day, every day, the Bible says here that every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. And they broke bread in their homes and they ate together with glad and sincere hearts. Are you glad when you get around your brothers and sisters in Christ? Amen. Are you really? You know what? I, I can't hardly wait to see my brothers and sisters in Christ. I just, I just love to be around them. Oh, well, there are some people I'd rather be around than, than others. I, I, I'm not uh, going to stand here and tell you that, that there aren't favorites. There are favorites. But I thank God tonight that Jesus don't have any favorites. Amen. <laughs> he looks at all people the same way. But this early church, they continued to meet together in the temple courts, and they, they, they broke bread, and they ate together, and they had glad and sincere hearts. You know what? If we just had a a church today that the people that went to church and the deacons and the leadership and the Sunday school teachers and everybody were totally together, were totally devoted to the Word, and they had sincere hearts. You would see these churches in our community grow by leaps and bounds. There wouldn't be any problem with building new churches or, or reaching the lost 
you would see everything going exactly the way God wants it to go. Amen. And that is together, devoted to His Word, devoted to His teaching, reaching out to rich people for, for Jesus. But the church today seems to have other ideas. There are people in the church that seem to have their own ideas. And they push their own agendas. And they cause confusion. They're all the time putting out rhetoric that doesn't need to be put out. They need to be getting behind the pastor and supporting the pastor and, and lifting him up and taking him uh, taking him out there with them when he when they go and saying, "Look, I am a I am a real proud book, a member of whatever church you're a member of, and we've got a great pastor, and I'd like you to come to church so that that I can introduce him to you." That's what you need to be doing, church. And I don't care what church you go to. There's lots of churches in our community that need to be making it a practice of lifting up their pastor. Right. And they were praising God. Praising God. You know why? I really believe that sometimes we have totally forgotten how to praise God. I really believe that instead of us coming to church to praise God and and to lift him up and to, to be fed from the Word of God, I think we're just there to be seen. I don't think we're really totally there to do the right thing, to, to praise God and lift up the kingdom. But the early church did. And you know what it says on there in verse 47? It says, and enjoying the favor of all the people. They enjoyed going to church. You know, it wasn't a labor. It was something that they totally enjoyed. They enjoyed being together. They enjoyed going to the church. And now listen to this. And I'm just about done. And the Lord added to their number daily those that were being saved. Church, wherever you are tonight, let me tell you something. That should be your prayer. That the church adds to its number on a daily basis. Amen. You know, we had a great revival. We saw adults come. We saw young people come. We saw children come. And I thank God that I had the opportunity to have prayer with some of these younger children and to talk to some of these younger children and also some of the adults and, and, and talk to them about Jesus and what Jesus really means to them. And I ask you tonight, what's wrong with the church? I'm going to tell you, the bride of Christ, there's nothing wrong with. Amen. But the thing that's wrong with the church today is the people that's in the church. That's right. Now, what can we do to correct our errors? We have simply got to repent of our sins. And we have got to give our life totally to Jesus. And we've got to be totally devoted to the church. And totally devoted to God's Word. Totally devoted to the pastor that's leading us. Totally devoted to reaching the lost. That's what we've got to do. That's how we correct the errors. Now, the other thing is, you've got to break this down just a little bit farther and put it down to a personal basis. What am I going to do with the things that we've heard tonight from God's Word? What am I going to do in my life personally? How am I going to correct the errors that I have in my life? And folks, I'll tell you, I've, I've really enjoyed uh, sharing a few words with you. Uh, I just appreciate the opportunity. I appreciate the confidence that my pastor has. I appreciate this radio station. If you want to support this radio station, you just give a call to 859-236-9332 or 859-236-9333 and uh, tell them that you'll give something toward the operation of this station for the next year. They, they need it. If they didn't need it, we wouldn't, wouldn't be doing this. Let's have a word of prayer, and then I'm going to have the, the, one of the greatest singing groups in the whole United States come up, and I'll introduce them just in a minute. Heavenly Father, we come to you, we thank you, and we thank you, Father, for your word. We thank you, God, for your son. We thank you, Father, for your savings. Yes. And we just thank you, God, for our pastor and all those that are here tonight from Gethsemane. And Heavenly Father, we just uh, most of all want to thank you for the strength and the wisdom that you give us from your word. And God, we just ask now that you bless the rest of this program, bless the rest of this share of Don. And God, I want to say a special prayer tonight and just ask that you lift up Brother Don. That Heavenly Father, you just reach down, put your loving arms around him. And God, I know that you know and he knows that you know that he's your servant. And God, I just pray that you lift him up. And I just pray that you heal him if it be your will. 
And it's in the wonderful and the precious name of Jesus that I pray. Amen.